Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to talk about the exciting results of the phase three trial called Surmount. This study was performed by Eli Lilly, which is the manufacturer of the drug that was tested. The drug that was tested is called terzepatide, also commercially known as Monjaro and Zepbound. This is that hormone that has GLP and GIP in it and is best known as an anti-obesity medication. But as we're seeing insurances continue to be reluctant to pay for these medications specifically for the treatment of obesity only, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk have gotten creative in doing studies that show how beneficial this class of medication can be for other chronic diseases. We saw that previously with cardiovascular disease and the use of Wagovi, and now we're moving to obstructive sleep apnea using terzepatide, also known as Zepbound or Manjaro. So what did they do in this trial? Well, this was a double-blind placebo-controlled study that was done in lots of different countries, and they recruited, unfortunately, only a little over 400 patients. I was surprised by how few they recruited. About 70% of the patients were men, which I'm not surprised about because obstructive sleep apnea is more common in men. They rapidly titrated them up on the terzepatide to the max tolerated dose, which they hoped was either 10 milligrams or 15 milligrams, which is definitely at the top range of terzepatide. And then they continued to just watch to see how their obstructive sleep apnea responded. Overall, these patients lost about 18 to 20% of their body weight. And I don't think it's the medication that helped their obstructive sleep apnea. I think it's the weight loss, obviously. So during that period of time, they were losing weight and they found that patients' sleep apnea improved a lot. So in order to diagnose and classify sleep apnea, they use something called an apnea hypopnea index. And that's basically the number of times that you stop breathing or pause your breathing for about 10 seconds. And so they call it the AHI. These patients that used terzepatide and were losing weight, the AHI index improved and re was reduced by about 63%, which is about 30 less episodes of patients stopping breathing, which that is, y'all, that's amazing. So when I have a patient that's diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea, they're typically male and they're typically obese and it typically negatively affects their life. They, they struggle with a lot of fatigue during the day and their sleep partners just complain about how they snore <laughs> uh, terribly at night. I always recommend weight loss because I know weight loss can significantly improve sleep apnea, but we know, all know how difficult that is just in general. So the next best step is to use a CPAP machine or a, a continuous positive airway pressure machine and people hate it. They often rip the masks off. The mask can be either over the nose or over the entire face. And what it does is that it, it forces air through the airway to keep the airways open so that they don't collapse on themselves. And they're just really uncomfortable. So I am really excited about having another option for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. And I think we're gonna see that insurances are gonna be more willing to cover these medications when they're used for things like obstructive sleep apnea versus just obesity, unfortunately. I don't agree with that, but I'm willing to work with it <laughs> as we get more data. So as I mentioned, this was a phase three trial, which um, showed tremendous benefits. Next, it's gonna go to the FDA, and the FDA will probably decide whether to approve terzepatide for the treatment of moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea, probably in about six to 12 months. This study specifically used patients that were over the age of 18 with moderate to severe sleep obstructive sleep apnea with obesity. They could already be on a CPAP machine or didn't necessarily have to be using a CPAP machine to be included in the study. 
And most importantly, none of the patients in this study had diabetes. I do think the FDA will probably approve this medication, terzepatide, for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea, but it's gonna be for a narrow group of people. I'll take any approvals any way I can get them at this point. Thanks for joining me.